In this video, I will tell you about the medical device related codes that are used by the MDR. And if you want to avoid looking like a fool when someone mentions codes like EMDN, MDN, MDA, MDS or MDT, this video is for you. And in case you didn't know it, these codes are all crucial when having a medical device on the European Union market. Hello there, I'm Pontus Jeda, former Notified Body employee with 20 years plus experience in medical devices. And you are watching a video that is part of my course, Introduction to MDR, the Medical Device Regulation. At Medical Device HQ, we offer high quality online and blended courses for medical device industry professionals. So please go to medicaldevicehq.com and see if there is a course that you can't live without. Are you subscribed to this YouTube channel? If yes, thanks. If not, make sure you do subscribe and turn on the notifications too, so you'll always know when we post new content. Okay, ready? Let's go. I will start with the MDR codes for the notified bodies. They are published in the implementing regulation 2017-2185. So you will not find them in the actual MDR. There is a link under this video to this implementing regulation or implementing act. And these codes are divided into four categories. First, there are the MDA and MDN codes that relates to the design and intended purpose of the device. MDA codes are for active medical devices and MDN for non-active medical devices. Then we have so-called horizontal codes. They are also divided into two categories. One for specific characteristics of the medical device, the MDS codes, and the other codes are for specific technology or processes related to the manufacturing of the medical device, the MDT codes. When it comes to MDA and MDN codes, the manufacturer and the notified body need to agree on one applicable product code for each device, MDN or MDA. And for the specific characteristics codes, the MDS, it could be that no code applies, or it could be that several code, uh, codes applies, depending on the characteristics of the device. For the technologies codes, the MDT, you need to specify at least one code. But for the MDT code, there could also be several applicable codes. So, when a manufacturer applies to a notified body, they need to specify which of these codes applies to each of their devices. This is done so that the notified body can decide if they are designated to be able to work with those devices. Okay, let's continue the explanation of those MDR codes. The MDA and the MDN codes are then further divided to form three active subgroups for MDA and two non-active subgroups for MDN. Let's now look into the regulation that contains the codes. This is what the code regulation looks like. And it starts with the MDA codes. The first MDA group of codes is active implantable devices. So this is where active implantable medical devices are to be found, with its four categories of devices. Then we have the group for active non-implantable devices for imaging, monitoring and or diagnosis, with its four categories. The third group under MDA is active non-implantable therapeutic devices and general active non-implantable devices. This subgroup actually has 18 categories in it, so you only see a small part of this group here. Turning to the non-active codes, the MDN then, and with its two subgroups. The MDN codes are starting with the group for non-active implants and long-term surgical invasive devices. Here we have four different categories of devices, which all are obviously different categories of implants. The other MDN group then is non-active, non-implantable devices. This group has 14 categories in it, so here you only see the first six. So this is basically where you find the rest of all devices. That was the MDA and the MDN codes. Also, I would like to inform you that the MDA and the MDN codes 
are used to group class 2a devices when the notified body deciding on the sampling of the technical documentation during conformity assessment. So for initial notified body certification, the notified body will choose at least one sample of class 2a products from each MDA and or MDN category. So what you as a manufacturer need to do is find the one applicable MDA or MDN code for each device. For example, if you are manufacturing contact lenses, the code for those lenses would be an MDN code since contact lenses are non-active medical devices. Further, contact lenses are not intended to be implants since you can remove them. Then we end up in the non-active, non-implantable device group. So, looking into the code regulation again, under non-active, non-implantable devices, we find the code MDN1206. Non-active, non-implantable ophthalmologic devices. And that is the applicable code for contact lenses. For each medical device, only one MDA or MDN should be assigned. But when it comes to the horizontal codes, non or several codes could be applied for each device, as I said in the introduction. And as we also know now, the horizontal codes are divided in two groups, MDS and MDT. So looking into the codes regulation again, we find these horizontal codes. These horizontal codes start with devices with specific characteristics, the MDS codes. There are 14 codes for those specific characteristics. So the list here is not complete for this group. And it's under the MDS codes you find the different sterilization codes, for example. The other horizontal codes are the MDT codes, and those are called devices for which specific technologies or processes are used. At least one of these MDT codes per device must be applied. The list here is not complete for this group either, since there are 13 different MDT codes. So the MDT codes basically specify how the device are manufactured. And that was the two horizontal codes. Let's take another example for clarification of all the potential codes then. If you as a manufacturer have reusable surgical instruments made out of steel like this, then you need one MDA or MDN code for defining the design and intended purpose. In this case, it would be an MDN code since those reusable surgical instruments are non-active devices. And one or several MDT codes to describe manufacturing technologies or processes. And potentially one or several MDS codes to describe any specific characteristics. So the MDN code would be MDN1208, since the example is a non-active, non-implantable instrument. An applicable MDT code then would be MDT2001, since the instrument in this example is made out of metal. And lastly, there is a suitable MDS code as well, MDS1006, since these are reusable surgical instruments. So a reusable surgical instrument made only out of metal would have those MDR codes applicable to it. Meaning that the notified body that would potentially assess these devices needs to have all these three codes included in their scope of designation. That was the explanation of the MDR codes. To clarify the MDR coding system a bit, there is an MDCG endorsed document published related to these codes. You find a link to that MDC document under this video. This MDCG endorsed document is the MDCG 2019-14 and it's named Explanatory Note on MDR Codes. It explains the coding a bit and also includes some helpful examples of devices for each codes. That was the MDR codes. The other coding system in MDR is called EMDN, which is short for European Medical Device Nomenclature. And it is stipulated in Article 26 in the MDR that there must be a specific nomenclature set up in EU for identifying different types of devices. And when the Commission had to decide on what system to use for this nomenclature, 
the choice fell on the Italian CND system. That has been functional for device registration in Italy, Portugal and Greece for quite a while under the previous medical device directive. So if you have been working with the CND system earlier, you might recognize this. The main purpose of the EMDN code is to facilitate the functioning of Udamed and to facilitate the grouping for class 2b devices when the notified body shall decide the extent of sampling of technical documentation needed for conformity assessment. On the European Commission website for MDCG documents, you will find several documents related to the EMDN codes for more detailed information on this coding system. So let's have a look into one specific MDCG document, MDCG 2021-12. It's called FAQ on the European Medical Device Nomenclature, EMDN. You will find a link to this MDCG document below this video also. The following can be read in this MDCG document. EMDN is intended to support all actors in their activities under the MDR and provides key device descriptions to patients as regards to their own devices and all other devices available on the market and registered in Udamed. So there is no doubt that this is important, not only important to the manufacturer, but also for the patients to identify devices that they are using. This MDCG guidance also includes a link to where to find the actual EMDN. Before I continue this presentation of the EMDN codes, you might still wonder what to actually use these codes for. As a manufacturer, you need the codes when you are registering devices in Udamed and also when reporting potential incidents in Udamed. But also, if you are a person of the public and you know you are going to be treated or supplied with some kind of medical device and you want to see what products are out there and what potential vigilance cases they could have, then you can search up the applicable EMDN code and then use that code to look up the products in Udamed and also find potential alternative devices. So let's see how you find these EMDN codes. This is what the EMDN website looks like. You find a link to this webpage below the video. As you see here, in the top of the picture, you can search for specific terms and devices. And as you also see, there are different levels of these EMDN codes. Then looking into the MDCG document 2021-12, we find the explanation of the level structure of EMDN. First, we see that there are seven levels of EMDN codes. The first level defines the categories. Continues then with level two that defines the groups and then a number of different type specifications, one to five. Each alphanumeric code, meaning the actual EMDN code, then begins with a letter referring to the category for which the device falls under, followed by two numbers indicating the group and a series of numbers which refer to the type. And the more numbers you define, the more specific the definition of the device will be. So the maximum number of characters for an EMDN code is thereby set to 13 and all EMDN code starts with a letter, as I said. When you then need to find the applicable code for a specific type of device, you can visit the EMDN webpage and either search directly in the search field or browse your way through the different levels. As an example, let's say we want to find the EMDN code for a multiple clip appliers for open surgery. Such a device is used to apply clips instead of traditional sutures to close a wound or a vessel during an open surgery procedure. So if we read through the categories, which is defined by the first letter of the EMDN code, going through the categories, we find letter H as the category for suture devices. Then the first two digits sets the group as level two. And here we find O3 as the group for hemostasis clips. And on level three, the third and fourth digit, we find hemostasis clips for open surgery. Then finally, we find at level four, the device we were looking for. 
So the EMD encode here would be H030101. Then for some devices we can continue further to level 5 all the way up to level 7 for even further detailing the devices. But in this example we stop at level 4. So a multiple clip appliers for open surgery will be defined in the fourth level as EMD encode H030101. I do recommend you to visit the website with these codes to take a look at the system and the structure of the levels. You also find this image below the video to digest it a bit if you feel you, you need to do that. The main reason why I stopped the example on the fourth level is that it is at this level of EMD encoding the grouping for class 2b devices is done for sampling of technical documentations by the notified body. So this is important when applying to a notified body for conformity assessment of class 2b devices. So this is the level constituting one letter and six digits as in this example. And this EMD encode level is what you will actually be asked to define when applying to a notified body, if you have class 2b devices. But when you are registering devices in Udamed or reporting vigilance, you shall assign the most granular and terminal term available, meaning the lowest applicable level of code in the tree structure. To summarize this, EMD encodes are relevant for UDAMED for device registration, but also when applying to a notified body if you have class 2b devices. And the MDR codes are relevant when applying to a notified body independent of classification, but specifically if you have class 2a devices, since the MDR codes groups those devices for sampling decision of the notified body during their conformity assessment. So while it may seem like a lot to take in, I am sure that learning about the many medical device codes available under the MDR will help you a lot in the long run. I hope you have enjoyed this video and I also love to hear your experiences, thoughts and opinions. So leave me a comment below if you wish. Are you following Medical Device HQ on LinkedIn? We'd love to connect with you and your friends from the medical device industry. That's all folks, thanks for watching and see you next time.